Good huh? You good? Very well. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome. What a day, as they say. This is the day the Lord made, literally, in this case, right? It's beautiful. Uh, incredible honor to be with you all. I want to say two things that are unrelated to the extraordinary reason uh, why we're gathered today. First of all, I, I really haven't had a chance to address in any, any forum other than a, a call-in show last night, but our hearts are heavy with Jim Florio's passing, a great, courageous governor who did, who was to, to Tammy and me was an incredibly, as a friend, but also wise counsel. Uh, and then more publicly, a great public servant, member of Congress, obviously governor, uh, who, who was a public servant with an enormous amount of courage, whether it was doing things that were politically unpopular, standing up to the NRA for an assault weapons ban, uh, the, the extraordinary steps Janet he took in the environment, uh, uh, that set us to be the number one really state in America on both assault weapon ban as well as the environment, a great leader. So we keep him in our prayers uh, and his family. Here, here, let's hear it for Jim Florio. And secondly, another uh, challenging subject, our hearts and thoughts and prayers are with our brothers and sisters in the state of Florida right now. Uh, we have communicated at the highest levels to Florida that we stand ready to help them in any way. Um, this is a his, sadly a historic uh, hurricane that is coming ashore as we speak. So please keep them in your, in, in your prayers. We have 84 troopers, thanks to our troopers and members of law enforcement. Thank you guys. We have 84 troopers in Puerto Rico and they will be there for as long as it takes and for as long as Puerto Rico needs us and we stand ready to offer assistance to the state of Florida or Georgia or others for that matter. Too early to tell how it will impact New Jersey. The, the, the models at the moment think some rain on Sunday, late afternoon into the evening, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that, obviously. So we're back to the reason why we're here, Judy. Uh, by the way, truth be told, we are actually holding this event only because I have missed being alongside Judy since we ended our daily <laughs> COVID briefings six months ago. Um, by the way, I should note that our last briefing was on March 4th, 2022, which happens to be Judy's and her sister Tony's birthday. Uh, it was a lot better than the birthday that they had on March 4th, 2020, when Judy and Chief of Staff George Helmy uh, informed me as I was coming out of surgery for a malignant tumor in my kidney that we had our, registered our first confirmed case of COVID. As of this morning, and Judy will Correct me if I'm wrong, we now have had cumulatively 2,320,810 COVID cases in the state of 2020. So any excuse to get the band back together. We are missing, sadly, our drummer, uh, Pat Callahan, uh, a great superintendent colonel of the state police who couldn't be with us today. I feel like we're one of those bands from the 60s or 70s that's, that's touring without all of our original members. So. We, we salute Pat in absentia and, uh, and thank him for everything he did. In addition to the woman of the hour, who, by the way, still needs no introduction, but we'll get several today. 
I am honored that we are joined by a host of other dignitaries, and that begins with a passel of outstanding, extraordinary colleagues from the Department of Health, and we have a whole bunch of folks in our administration, and I'm probably going to mess this up. I saw Treasurer Liz Moyo, uh, who hails from this district proudly. The Acting Attorney General Matt Placken is uh, walking toward us, Secretary of State Tahisha Way, Director of the Office of, Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness, Lori Duran, the uh, head of our information technology, Chris Rhine is with us. Our kids like to call him Chris Pine, as in the actor. Uh, George Helmy, Chief of Staff, Paramel Garg, Chief Counsel. We get a whole range of folks from our administration. And we are also joined by a number of outstanding elected officials. I see Senator Shirley Turner. We're in her backyard. Shirley, great to see you. Assemblywoman Verlina Reynolds-Jackson, also from this um, district. Assemblyman Raj Mukherjee, we're going to hear from Raj. Um, Mercer County Executive, more on him in a minute. Brian Hughes. Brian, great to be with you. To his right, Trenton Mayor Reed Gossiora, um, and I'm sure many, many others. Uh, and also, very importantly, Bill Watson, uh, who's with us who goes way back with Judy, and we're going to hear from Bill in a few minutes. And, and most importantly, Judy, you got a lot of family members here on both your side and Tony's side of the family, and hats off in particular to your sister, your brother, your sister-in-law, other members of the family. Incredibly honored to be with you all today. So this is, if you will, a 21st century version of that program. This is your life. I feel like we're going to pull out your third grade math teacher here in a minute and talk about addition and subtraction. But more importantly, each of the folks I mentioned and so many others can speak to Judy's impact and how it has been felt uh, in many walks of life, including at many levels of, of government. So it was last May when I announced that an agreement with then Senate President Steve Sweeney, Steve wanted to be here and could not, as did Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin, and I want to thank both of them in absentia. We announced that we would en enact legislation renaming the Department of Health building behind us as the Judith, Judith M. Persichelli building. And there's only one other state office building in Trenton that bears the name of a former office holder or senior dignitary, and that is, Brian, the building named for your dad, the Richard J. Hughes Justice Complex. I've lost Matt wherever he is, but Matt hangs his hat uh, in that office. Um, Governor and Chief Justice Hughes is a giant in our state's history, and Brian, God bless your dad, and history will say the exact same thing about Judy. So this is a fitting honor. So as I said last May, when we were gathered at University Hospital in Newark, where, by the way, Judy had previously served as CEO, I will quote myself from that day, the job of Commissioner of Health is a hard one on a good day. The decision to ask Judy to serve as Commissioner of Health has more than proven to be the right one. She has been the right leader for these times. I think I just saw the Maples. Are you here? J former Director of the Office of Homeland Security, uh, Jared Maples, and Mary Maples, his wife, who's now running the show for us at University Hospital. Nice to see you. Um, so I said what I just said on that day in May in relation to the COVID pandemic specifically, but they're frankly comments that are true for everything that Judy does. Now, before I, I go further, Judy, allow me to shoot down a rumor that's circulating out there that it has taken so long to get to today because there were so many letters that we had to order and install. There's no truth to that. But there is truth to the old adage, adage that all good things come to those who wait. Judy's steady, I think extraordinary leadership of the department has only further defined her legacy as a healthcare professional and certainly as commissioner of health and further proven why she is so worthy of this honor. Not only in her continued guidance of our COVID response efforts, but also in our work to combat monkeypox, to improve maternal health. This is a good moment to acknowledge, uh, please God, uh, better late than never, the great First Lady of the great state of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy, is with us. I would have paid a big price had I screwed that one up. Judy's efforts continue on things like focusing on the dangers of e-cigarettes, 
to ensure that our hospitals and community health centers remain strong and open to all who need them, and so, so much more. The title of Commissioner of Health comes with a broad portfolio, and Judy remains an exemplary model of public service for the entire staff, the entire extraordinary staff at the department. And I hope that as the first nurse to serve as Commissioner of Health, she has also inspired more than a few young people to pursue a career in nursing, and God knows we need them now more than ever. As a nurse, as the CEO of two hospitals, and now for the past three years as commissioner, Judy has been intimately involved in health care policy at every level from creation to implementation. And to me and my team, both throughout the COVID pandemic and today, Judy's insights based on decades of practical experience have been invaluable. And no one will ever accuse Judy of hiding her opinions. She has all, always told us without exception, not what she thinks we want to hear, but what she firmly believes we need to hear. Trust me, by the way, when you hear what she thinks in her nurse voice telling you what to do, you go ahead and do it. I do what Judy Persichelli tells me to do, and I always will. Judy, I know, again, with a heavy heart, there's one person above all that we wish could be here in the flesh to celebrate on this day, and that is your late husband, your beloved Tony. God bless him, and God bless his memory. But I know that his spirit is with you and with all of us today, and with many members of his family. By the way, uh, Judy, I said to Judy, how can you distinguish between your family and Tony's family? And Tony said, Tony's family is the family with all the really cool hair. That was an actual exchange, I want you to know. <laughs> Before we get to the moment where we pull away that curtain behind me, I'm gonna ask several of our VIPs to come and share their thoughts, and then we will hear from Judy. So as I said, the woman who needs no introduction is gonna get one anyway, and then we're gonna head over and formally unveil the Judith M. Persichelli Department of Health Building, or really as the business publication ROINJ, and I wanna give them a shout out for this, I'm frankly really disappointed we didn't think of this first. It will be the building that needs no introduction. <laughs> Again, I thank each and every one of you for coming out on this glorious day. It is now my honor to introduce one of the Assembly's bright lights and prime sponsors, importantly, of the legislation renaming this building, and someone who has worked very closely with Judy as well. Please help me welcome Assemblyman Raj Mukherjee. Raj? So I especially appreciate that we didn't wait to do this until after you're dead. I mean, and I think that's a shame about, you know, building namings and all that kind of stuff. So that would have taken another 40 years, and uh, I'm glad that we aren't that patient. Um, Governor, First Lady, and Judy, before she was a health commissioner, was a First Lady herself of Pennington, uh, cabinet members, mayor, county executive mayor, uh, and my colleagues in the legislature and all of the governor's distinguished cabinet members and our honored guests. We are here to commemorate a truly remarkable woman who has steered us through what could only qualify as the biggest public, public health crisis one of the biggest crises um, that we will all ever experience in our lifetimes, God willing. Um, and for the last two and a half years, she's really held two jobs. In addition to serving as the health commissioner on top of the existing cabinet role of regulating, licensing, inspecting all our state's acute care, non-acute care, health care facilities and hospitals and labs and ensuring folks are covered and enrolled in the ACA and have access to health care, quality health care here in New Jersey and early intervention and working with the First Lady on maternal and infant mortality and waging that war before the pandemic um, and all of the other functions, uh, the psych hospitals and anything else of being the health commissioner, she has functioned as essentially a crisis coordinator and the de facto czar 
fighting the pandemic. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's really, you know, several jobs on its own. So your courage, your clarity, your empathy, your level-headedness, and your and the governor's guidance to New Jersey and the rest of the nation, other states in that compact and that alliance followed suit when you took action, when the governor took action on more than one occasion, particularly in those vital early stages of the pandemic. Um, and personally, my family wouldn't have, couldn't have made it through with our health and sanity intact without those things that you both graciously, so graciously provided us all. But I wanna give a little bit more color to Judy Persicali as a person, because I've had the benefit of knowing her uh, for 20 years um, uh, since I was a teenager. Then CEO of St. Francis Medical Center, um, and, uh, and then EVP of, of Catholic Health East, the Northeast Division, nine regional health healthcare and hospital systems, a $3 billion operating budget, and all this kind of fancy stuff. And um, my, I, ha I ran at that time a public affairs and healthcare consulting firm, my partner, Brian, your brother, and Governor Hughes' stepson. Um, and uh, Judy was one of our very first clients. And I remember I looked back to find Judy Persichelli memories, um, uh, you know, before today's unveiling. Um, and because Judy would make a terribly boring subject of a roast, so I'm glad this isn't a roast, because while she has plenty of stories about me that could jeopardize re-election, um, I don't have that in a reciprocal fashion. Um, when you talk about Judy, you have fond memories and great laughs because of the type of person she is, the type of person uh, Tony, uh, Mayor Percy Kelly was, and the type of couple they were. It's so really enjoyable to hang out with together. But try as I might, and I knew her well, you don't have dirt on her, only accomplishments to celebrate, even after she's been imbibing. Um, but thankfully this isn't a roast. So I was looking back and I looked at one exchange with her back in like 2003, 2004, 20 years ago, where I had drafted or redrafted a resume that was like, I had to take a 15 year old draft and then update it because people with titles like CEO, they haven't had to do a CEO in God, uh, a resume in God knows how long. I, Phil Murphy probably hasn't had to do a resume in, in 40, 50 years. So, so uh, I had drafted it with emphasizing year over year revenue growth, right sizing, fiscal accomplishments, positive operating margins, the stuff that Google probably told me you're supposed to put on a two or three page resume of a CEO or, a, or someone in the C-level. And I was looking at the red lines she sent back. They were handwritten and faxed and then scanned as opposed to like track changed, but that's okay. And, and she talks about, I jotted down a few of the bullets. Implementing a cardiac surgery program, ranking one of the highest in quality in the state, Fox Chase Cancer Center, an emergency shelter for abused and neglected children, Children's Futures West Ward, Angel's Wings, which was an emergency shelter for abused and neglected children. And she crosses out the bullets that I had put in that I thought emphasized what someone would be looking for. And what that demonstrates is what she valued about her tenure in that role. And it was about how she served the community as the chief executive of a nonprofit hospital, even though it was an infinitesimal, negligible part of her budget or operation. I would argue had very little to do with the actual operation and her, her job, her role. But that's what she valued. The loss of your husband, I thought it'd be good for you at the time when you agreed to do this. Little did you know, little did you know what you were getting into. You were the exactly the right person at exactly the right moment in history for this job. 
which I would say you had many pinnacles of your career along the way, but this is a pinnacle. And to do so in an administration that gave you the support that ideologically put ideology aside and said, let's be guided by science. Um, and to have a nurse in that role, I think, made all the difference in the world. And when you all think back to those dark, the darkest early days, um, and how much fear and questioning took over our daily lives, the comfort we got from those daily press conferences, um, you know, uh, I think coupled with the Herculean effort you and your DOH colleagues took, and even supporting our local and county governments, I'm sure Brian and Reed would agree, and I know we saw that firsthand in Jersey City and in Hudson County, the support you provided to our local health officers in, uh, uh, was so crucial when PPE and ventilators were in so short supply at the onset of the pandemic and when we were figuring out getting vaccines and therapeutics out there. So, Commissioner, on this honor that is well-earned and well-deserved, but falls far short, far short. Um, I'm so humbled to have been able to sponsor the bill the governor signed in recognizing your achievements and your incredible sacrifice on behalf of the people of our state. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So well, done. So well said, Rush. Raj, just one clarifying question. A little personal, forgive me. How old were you in 2003? <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. Someone also had to look up the history of Google. I'm not sure that was an option for you in 2003, but. <laughs> Great story. Great story. Thank you for your leadership on this and on so many other fronts. I mentioned his father, Governor Hughes. Uh, your brother Michael sent Tammy and me a picture yesterday of, of your dad and President Kennedy in Newark in 1961. And it was an extraordinary photo. But Brian, thank you so much for your leadership here in Mercer County. Please help me welcome the County Executive Brian Hughes. Thank you, Governor. Now I know why I, I'm not in the legislature. I, I couldn't possibly talk that long, but very good. <laughs> I will, uh, I will tell you that I, uh, I uh, could participate in, a, uh, participate in a roast of you, Judy. Uh, I know how long we've, we've known each other, and I, I also do want to mention Tony. He was a, a bright light and a bright star in our great county. He was the longest serving uh, mayor in uh, one of our best boroughs in, in uh, Mercer County, and I'll never forget him. And the people of Pennington will never forget them. The dedication of the Department of Health building in the name of uh, Judith Persichelli. Are they going to call it Judy or Judith? Uh, we'll, we'll see when we get inside of what the writing says. It's indeed fitting. I've known Judy for many years. I'm proud to call her my friend. I can boast that she's a proud Mercer County resident. And Judy has been a good friend to the Mercer community th throughout her celebrated career. And I'd like to say that she started right here in the city of Trenton, uh, where she earned her nursing degree. From day one of the pandemic response, Commissioner Percy Kelly worked tirelessly to deliver scientific information to the people of New Jersey. And I will tell you from the minute we opened up our uh, testing center at uh, Quaker Bridge Mall to the day we went into full, full time uh, 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 injections at the Cure Arena. Judy was with us. We could pick up the phone and, and get a response as quickly as possible from yourself or from uh, one of your staff. And uh, that is uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, part of the steady and reassuring manner Judy worked to keep our residents informed. 
Uh, her clarity allowed us as public officials to unify as we navigated the COVID-19 pandemic together with the shared goal of saving lives. And that was the number one goal of Governor Murphy and Judy Persicali and uh, everyone who joined together and worked together in this state to make lives uh, part of what our, our real uh, accomplishment was. And I want to tell you something. When New Jersey looks across the country and looks what we did, Governor, you deserve the applause of many because you deserve a great number of thanks for the people of New Jersey for the lives we saved and the people we kept from getting COVID. And let me say this about Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Percy Kelly. Despite what I imagine were her enormous demands on her, every time I personally reached out, Judy was there to pick up the phone uh, I know that this honor deserves uh, recognition. And uh, in fact, we had to wait a few years uh, after my father was dead for him to get the uh, recognition that you're getting today. So, so uh, uh, let me tell you, this is a double recognition that uh, uh, you are getting it while you're alive. And when you, when you can appreciate uh, the recognition of the hard work you've done for the people of New Jersey, and especially for Mercer County, but every county. I know if every county executive could be here, they would be here. If every chairman of every commissioner board could be here, they would be here. We owe you a lifetime of gratitude for what you've done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. We have established beyond the shadow of a doubt that this is neither a roast nor a wake. <laughs> and let's keep it that way on both fronts. Thank you, Brian. Uh, next up to bat, the mayor of the capital city uh, and uh, just does a terrific job. Not the easiest job on the, on the planet, I can tell you that. Please help me welcome Mayor Reed Gossiera. Well, good afternoon, every, everybody, and uh, thanks so much uh, for inviting me to speak uh, for our, our illustrious uh, commissioner. Um, I've always had an affinity for uh, health. I was actually named after uh, Walter Reed Hospital, and uh, my father worked for the Department of Health uh, for 30 years. Um, and so I've always um, had a passion for health care, and it was great to be a legislator in the 15th Legislative District along uh, Shirley, Bonnie, Liz, Verlina, um, and uh, Anthony, uh, because uh, our, our office was a revolving door for uh, Judy Persichelli coming in, talking about uh, health care issues and, and her passion for um, the hospital, St. Francis, where she was CEO. And in my 25 years, I've always known Judy Persichelli, whether it's a first lady in her own right or the first lady of uh, St. Francis and now the commissioner of health. Um, what an extraordinary job, um, and it was always enjoyable to watch the Phil and Judy show on a daily basis. I had it in my, I had it in my office, and for, for experts and civilians alike, it was so informative, and I think you really put the public at ease. Um, I know Judy used to say what the governor is really saying, but... Um, <laughs> But uh, both of you um, were, were a wonderful resource for, for New Jersey and really did put us at ease during the uh, pandemic. This is well-deserved uh, recognition of you. Um, I'll, I'll always look fondly at, at the building's name and, and your presence in the, in the 15th District in the capital city. So God bless you, and uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Reed. Well said. Uh, and thanks for your leadership here in the capital city. Thinking back to those, we have one more speaker before Judy, but th before I introduce Bill, uh, thinking back to those days, Judy, I have to get a word off my chest that I've not used in many months. So I'm going to say it. Knucklehead. <laughs> there, I just got that. 
I had to relieve myself of that burden. Uh, I don't know how far back Bill Watson goes with Judy, but it's a few years, and he's a, about 40. He's a dear friend. We are thrilled to have him here with us today. Please help me welcome the one and only Bill Watson. Good afternoon. I received a call from the governor's press secretary, assistant secretary, saying that we needed to keep these remarks within two minutes if we could, maybe three at the most. And so trying to honor that, I had to edit out a number of stories I wanted to share in the 40 years that I've known Judy, um, such as the time that we went down to Charleston, I think, for, to meet with the president of the system that we were a part of. Uh, and we took the bishop with us, and we got there, um, and the president of the, of the system took us to this wonderful restaurant. She recommended some food for us, and then Judy also, trying to help the bishop, trying to keep his weight down, said, you know, you really might want to take advantage of that. So he did. He ordered this meal that came out on a little piece of toast like that. <laughs> As I had this wonderful meal from Charleston, sitting on my plate in front of me, and I'm eating this, and all I can see him doing is like looking at me, and I'm thinking, all right, when we get back, Judy's gonna be in trouble, right? <laughs> and then there's uh, this one other time, and, and again, I, because the assemblyman took a little bit more than two or three minutes, I think I'm gonna they avail, uh, 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 I'm gonna avail myself. Um, <laughs> and, and the second story I wanna share is that uh, part of the same system, uh, the system decided to have a conference in Keystone, Colorado. Uh, and if you know where that is, it's above Denver, up in the mountains. And they had it at a resort. And at that resort, we had to walk from wherever they housed us to the conference area. Now, they had to fly out a number of people because of altitude sickness. And uh, my wife and I weren't very happy about that, and neither was Tony. We were all kind of huffing and puffing when we got to wherever we had to go. So finally, Judy made an executive decision after the second day and said, we're getting out of here. And we drove back down to Denver and crashed the wedding. <laughs> you, you remember that, right? As we walked in, we saw a wedding going on and we crashed it. I had a great time. Anyway, I have some more of those stories, but unfortunately not today. But anyway, Governor, First Lady, Tammy Murphy, and uh, Judy and the Mella Persichelli family. It is an honor that I have an opportunity to say a few words about someone I have great respect and admiration for and whom I call a dear friend. I would also be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity, and Governor, you touched on it earlier, to share my profound sadness about the death of former Governor Jim Florio. Please allow me to digress only for a moment and share a brief story about the former governor. I supported Jim Florio in 1981 in the primary election, even though Mercer County had his own favorite son, uh, Senator Joseph Merlino, um, in the race. And so I went against the party leadership because I saw a man always focused on doing what was best for people, always more concerned with helping others than how his decision might impact his popularity. Well, you all know that he won the primary, but then went on to lose in the general election by a little over 1,700 votes. A few days later, I experienced, a fall, I experienced falling off of my roof, landing me in the hospital for a few days. And rumors quickly circulated that I had actually jumped. I hadn't jumped, but I think I might have been pushed, my wife sitting in there. And I, I, <laughs> she may have had something to do with that. I also mentioned Governor Florio for another reason, though. You see, those outstanding leadership qualities I saw in him, as her board chair at St. Francis Medical Center, I also saw that in Judy. Never afraid to make the right decision, even though it may not be popular. And as the governor was saying, not what you want to hear, what you need to hear always caring about patients first and foremost, always seeking ways to be strong 
advocate in the community. This dedication and naming today is well earned, absolutely well earned. So let me end, because I only had two and a half minutes and I've already used that up. Let me end by saying that Judy not only has been a colleague, she and her late husband, Tony, have also been dear friends to me and my family. My sister, Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman, also wanted me to convey her congratulations on this August occasion. Bonnie and Judy share similar traits. Both have accomplished much in their lives. And both decided in their twilight years, their twilight years, Donna, by the way, tried to get me to edit that, but I, I didn't. In, in their twilight years, they had more to give and to take on new challenges. I can tell you without hesitation, we are all better because of their decision to continue in their service. Judy, this is a great day. And I can tell you that the Watson family loves you. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, that was awesome. I might as well break this news now. Uh, Judy Persichelli, Bill Watson, Vince Vaughn, and Owen Wilson are starring in the upcoming Wedding Crashers 2. <laughs> so more on that. Uh, I think it's a Netflix production, so keep your eye out for that. Bill, thank you. And please give Bonnie a hug for us and thank her for her great leadership. So here we go. This is the woman who needs no introduction, the woman for whom we are all here today and every day. Please help me welcome the Commissioner of the Department of Health, Judy Persichelli. Thank you. Governor Murphy, First Lady. Senator Turner, where are you? You're back there. Now, I'm going to tell stories about a couple of people. I first met Senator Turner when she was working at Ryder University. My husband was doing college recruiting for Western Electric, and she was head of that, that department. Thank you. She was head of that department. And he came home and he said, I have met the most wonderful woman working at Ryder. So, Senator, I've known you for 50 years. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I'm shortening the, the years, by the way. So it'll always be 50 years, even though it may have been longer. I've known you for 50 years. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Um, Raj, <laughs> Assemblyman, he didn't tell the whole story. He did not tell the whole story. We were at a fundraiser at uh, RATS, and my husband was bored, sitting next to this young fellow, this child prodigy, who was 18 at the time. We got, and Tony interviewed everybody, people that knew Tony knows, he interviewed everybody, it was what he did. We got in the car, he said, Judy, I don't know who that young fellow is, but hire him. So I did. So I did, and look at him, I am so, so proud of him. The Hughes family I've known for 50 years. <laughs> I can't uh, thank the Hughes family enough, um, all of you. And in fact, I'm here with uh, my, my nursing school colleagues, and um, I don't know whether you know this, but every single one of us had an opportunity to take care of your mom when she was at St. Francis. I'll get to Bill Watson, because I have stories about Bill Watson. Oh, I won't tell them. Sorry, Bill. Um, but thank you so much for being here. And Mayor, thanks for having the courage to be the mayor of Trenton. God bless you. <laughs> I pray for you every day. Assemblywoman Reynolds Jackson, there she is back there. Um, my husband proudly supported you at the Democratic uh, Convention. Uh, and he came home and told me that. And I did not know you, uh, but he proudly uh, supported you. So thank you for being here. So early this morning, I received a text from a good friend of mine, Richard Weinroth. You, some of you may know Richard. He is a lobbyist lawyer right here in that building, by the way. And here's what it read. Is it really true? Is the governor naming the health building after you and you are still alive? <laughs> okay, I am alive. And I stand here before you today full of gratitude and humility. 
uh, for this great honor. Uh, to say I'm, I'm overwhelmed is, is definitely an understatement. Over two and a half years ago, the virus never before seen in humans hit New Jersey first, hard, and fast. And in six weeks, our first after our first confirmed case on March 4th, our state would experience the devastating impact of this invisible enemy. Everyone that has been affected by this pandemic, everyone has been affected in various, various ways. So today, if you'll bear with me, it seems only fitting that we do hold a moment of silence for the individuals who have lost their lives due to the pandemic. Thank you. On December 15th, 2020, we administered our first vaccine to a nurse at University Hospital. We, or I should say I, set a target to vaccinate 70% of the adult eligible population within six months. I know that many of my colleagues at the department were really not on board with that. Many of them whispered in the hallways, tell her we can't do that. Tell her it will never happen. We're setting a goal too high. Tell her we're gonna be embarrassed. And then some of them actually were whispering, has she lost her mind? 70% of the adult eligible population in six months? But you know, we had no choice. We knew the vaccines were effective and we knew our mission to ensure that New Jerseyans live long, healthy lives was in jeopardy. So we went big, we went really big. And all of my colleagues at the Department of Health went big with me and we did it. We exceeded our goal, actually. The public servants at the department, there's a hand up there, the public servants of the department worked day and night, seven days a week, and they did it. And they continue to work tirelessly through monkeypox, through everything that has been thrown at us this, in the last two years. So I wanna be clear to all of the colleagues at the, at the Department of Health, every single one of you, your names de deserve to be on this building as well. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. So there are some really, really dark days back in the first surge. At a time like that, there's no substitution for a supportive and loving family, encouraging friends, and I, I'm blessed with both. Every day, my older twin sister, <laughs> My older twin sister, she's 16 minutes older than me. My older twin sister and my brother Jim and my sister-in-law Tara and my niece uh, Tess, who could not be uh, with us today. She's boarding at Blair, couldn't, couldn't get off. Um, they were always with me when I needed them the most. The Persichilles are here, you can tell by their hair. Persichilli boys are here. Um, my brother-in-law Dom, my sister-in-law Joan, my niece Cindy, uh, nephew Dino, and our grandniece and nephew Carly and Dan, a team I knew that I could always rely on. My friends sent me encouraging texts throughout. Many of those texts, by the way, I got during press conferences. You did not know that. So I'm gonna start with my high school friends. The Petrians, the Petrians are here. They're class of 66, St. Peter's High School in New Brunswick, and we still meet every year down the shore. Um, Joan Horvath, Michelle Donato, Michelle being a preeminent land use attorney, I want you to know, in, in New Jersey. Um, Mary Lynn Lynch and Paul Matasara. Paul, Paul, where are you? The former mayor, the former mayor of North Brunswick. Um, I think some people here will remember the heyday of Lorenzo's. We talked a little bit about Joe Merlino. Um, Lorenzo's Cafe, where all things important got settled. It was a much easier time in that back room. My dear friend and former owner of Lorenzo's, uh, Annie Merlino, has joined us today. So I came to Trenton right out of high school to go to nursing school, St. Francis. It was the best decision I ever made. I met my husband. I stayed in and around uh, Trenton most of my life. Most importantly, I met individuals who would become my family, my extended family, my sisters and brothers. 
Juliana, uh, who graduated with me, and Wendell Prabilla, former mayor of Ewing Township. Uh, Dr. Masood Resvand, uh, he's here, known very, very popular, oh, very popular urologist known by about 90% of the men in Mercer County. <laughs> Say, why? Uh, we are all members, oh, Valerie, where's Valerie? She's doing my wedding, Valerie McQuaid and Dr. Jack Custrip. We are all members of the St. Francis One and Done Club. That has met on and off every Friday for over 40 years. One and done. You would love it, Governor. You would love it. But you have to write an essay to get into it. Okay. When I returned to St. Francis uh, after having served as the EVP at St. Peter's in New Brunswick, that's when I had the privilege of meeting uh, the Chief of Staff to Mayor Doug Palmer at the time, Bill Watson. And then he served as my chairman, my chairman of the board. I couldn't have been more fortunate to have a chairman that I could talk to, that understood what the issues were. And like a lot of people before me today, always went first to the values. Bill, it, it was a pleasure not only serving with you, but becoming your friend. Uh, Donna and Bill um, welcomed me into to their family, and I've had the privilege of celebrating with them, and I've had the privilege of mourning with them. Uh, I can't ask for better friends. But of course, if you're a friend of Bill's, F-O-B, you need to know his friends. And he introduced Tony and me to the Youngbloods, Allison and Joe Youngblood, whose friendship through good times and bad times I'm most grateful for. Lastly, we are in the shadow of the James Kearney campus of Mercer, Mercer County Community College. James Kearney, as some of you may know, was a trusted advisor to Woodrow Wilson, also an advocate and a supporter of Trenton. I had the privilege of serving on the Kearney Foundation with my dear friends, his descendants and grandsons who are here today to celebrate with me and I want to thank them uh, for, for joining, joining me. Uh, Regan Kearney and Lincoln Kearney, thanks so much for, for joining. So now I hope you can see how in any crisis, valuable relationships, and how fortunate I have been, how value, valuable relationships have made a difference. Frankly, I could not have gotten through the last three years without them. To add to the relationships that I just shared with you, I established so many through the pandemic. There are so many people to thank. Communicable disease service, emergency management, data analytics, communications, I could go on and on. But as many of you know, I joined the department at a really difficult time. My husband passed away July 24th. I had made a commitment to the governor that I would join on August 4th. And I knew that he would want me to honor that commitment. It was difficult, but I came to work every day knowing that the steady hand of my chief of staff, Andrea Mejia Martinez, was with me. And her right-hand person, who I called Sarge, is the sergeant here? D. Morris, Sarge, <laughs> D. Morris, I don't know where she, she's back there somewhere. Um, they guided me every single day, along with my deputies, uh, Marcella Maziars at the time, Deb Hartel, Robin Ford, Thalia Sirku, Joy uh, Lindo, and along with Dr. Tan and Dr. Lifshitz, we made it through. With the assistance of George Helmy and Matt Placken, and most importantly, Colonel Callahan, we all worked together to make it through that, particularly that first year. When the public health emergency was called and the Colonel and I were put in charge, I recall saying to myself, what the heck does the head of the state police know about public health? Little did I know that he was saying at the same time, what the heck does she, a nurse, <laughs> what does she know about emergency management? Well, I got a call at 1.30 a.m. one night. He said, Commissioner, we have a problem. I got a call. We're running out of ventilators in South Jersey. I don't know how to get a hold of ventilators. We've got them. We've got it. We need ventilators. I said, Colonel, I'll get you some ventilators. I know where the, the hospital inventory is, and I have a direct line to all the CEOs. So we got ventilators. I gave him the inventory, and he transported, the OEM transported the ventilators to South Jersey. We both woke up in the morning, or we didn't go to sleep. And I think we realized that, yeah, we're, we're going to do this together. 
We need each other. The value of that relationship cannot be understated. And I delivered, he transported, and we both learned from one another. So my friendship with Pat Callahan, and I'm sorry he can't be here today, is one of the lasting, what I call, after actions uh, that I will cherish for the rest of my life. So that's it, folks. Um, I feel like I've forgotten to thank somebody. Oh, Governor Murphy. <laughs> Governor Murphy. Wow. Oh, just when you think you've learned in your lifetime and you're president of this and you're CEO of that or whatever, you think, just when you think you've learned just about everything you need to know about leadership, you come upon a person up front and personal who teaches you more lessons about mission-driven, value-based leadership than any textbook can teach you. Leading through ambiguity of this pandemic, the most difficult thing any leader confronts. Remaining steady with selfless dedication to the people he serves. Patience beyond belief, especially during those 200 plus or 300 press conferences. I mean, I could really go on. Governor, thank you for the support you've given me, your leadership, and the, what you've given to the Department of Health. I have often said that there are so many individuals through this pandemic standing on the sidelines, criticizing. And then there are others who are not just living through this history, this history of a once in a century pandemic but are actually making history. Governor, you're making history. You're the right leader at the right time. You are the leader the books will be written about whose actions saved so many more lives than were lost. We all owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you. So here's where it happens. Interestingly, in Trenton, where I started, in this honor, I mean, it's beyond words. And for all of the legislators who were involved in this reality, have involved in making this happen, I, I can't thank you enough. I never thought when I came to Trenton as a 17-year-old to go to St. Francis Nursing School that I would be standing here today in front of all of you and that my name uh, would be on a building. It's um, something that um, I, I still can't believe that it's happening. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here. Thank you, family, friends, colleagues. Um, if I could put all your names under mine, I would. Uh, but even all your names um, are a little too much <laughs> to put up on a, on a building. But you deserve it. Thank you. Wow. Judy, thank you for your extraordinary words in my direction, but also for everything you do, including you're up here. You're, 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 a, you're a high wire act with no wires attached to you and no net down below, and you are as good as it gets. Uh, let's hear it one more time for Judy Persico. The lives you've changed, the lives you've impacted, the lives you've kept alive, it's ex an extraordinary legacy. And your comments, I also want to underscore your comments about Pat in absentia. Please keep him and his family in your prayers. He's one of the all-time great guys. I think, as they say in Hollywood, it's a wrap. We get to go over and unveil this thing, right? Let's go. Yes, sir, you go.